obviously, as you know, because you're in the room, the uh, title is Extending Observability of the Application Lifecycle with Argo, Flux, and Captain. Now, as you can probably see, uh, Anna Medina is not here. She can't make it for reasons outside of her control, so she sends her apologies, and you've got me instead. So, yeah, as I say, uh, the CD Foundation um, and the CNCF Ambassador, I spent about nine years in the observability space. So that's my, that's my technical background. I've said I'm a DevRel at Dynatrace. Uh, and observability, security, and progressive delivery are my uh, interests and my focus areas professionally and then outside of work anything to do with the ocean on it in it under it scuba diving um, the two photos there by the way uh, they're, they're me on slack uh, I signed up to slack with my personal and my work email and I cannot for the life of me figure out which is which so there are two photos both of them are me so if you find either of those it's me all right so this is the Captain, of course, is an open source project. This is not a, a, a product. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for a bit of kind of user feedback or, or, or room feedback here. So I'm going to put three observable, observability challenges on here that we have seen, and I just want a nod or a shake for each one of them. Because as a project, we really need to make sure that we're obviously addressing the concerns and, and, and the problems that, that you're really having. So. The first is observability tool sprawl. We'd all love it to have a single tool to go for our metrics. Um, that's not the case. In an enterprise, you'll have Prometheus and Dynatrace and another Prometheus instance and Splunk and so on and so forth. So that's, that's problem number one. How do we get a unified view and, and treat that data in a unified manner? The second is when we make a change, how do we actually measure that? Tools like Argo are very, very good at doing a deployment, but how do we actually measure whether that worked and, and whether it was successful? And then the third is taming the integration complexity. The talks that I've heard the last two days have all been about we're maintaining this point-to-point -point integration with this tool, and then we build it again with, with another tool, and so on and so forth. So challenge number one, uh, the observability tool sprawl. Just kind of give me a nod or a shake, a yes or a no, if that's an issue for you. Yes, yes, lots of nods. OK. So the solution that we have come up with, of course, is the Captain metric server. Basically, think conceptually about the metric server as a cache that lives on your cluster. What it will do is it will sit as an operator on your cluster, and it, you define your endpoints of where your metrics are. They could be Prometheus, they could be Dynatrace, they could be Datadog or Splunk or, or wherever. The metric server will go out and retrieve those metrics from that solution and pull them into the metric server, as I say, like a cache. And then once they're in there, you can treat those all the same. You can just say, get me a captain metric you don't really care where the end, where, where the metric actually came from. Now, of course, that opens up a lot of other stuff and, and other capabilities like HPA and CADA. So you can drive those tools with the captain metrics. And this is what it looks like. So you have a uh, kubectl get captain metrics, and you can see there uh, we're pulling one from the provider Dynatrace and one from Prometheus. And again, you don't care where, they, where those metrics came from. How do you actually define that? How do you, what, what does it look like in YAML? You won't be surprised to know there is a custom resource behind this. Um, that's top one there is the Prometheus. So you have a provider, and then you give it your uh, query. And obviously, the query is uh, tool specific. So the query for Dynatrace will be different to you know, the Prometheus query. You can also see there, you can define the fetch interval seconds. So they're both 10, but you can say, well, fetch the metrics from Prometheus or fetch this metric from Prometheus every 60 seconds. 
So there's, there's that flexibility as well. And then that's just an example of how it could actually be used with HPA. Here you're saying, well, I've got HPA. Here's my metric, my availability SLO, and I'm pulling it from uh, you know, a kind captain metric, and here's my, my target value. And if not, HPA will then scale accordingly. Again, remember that most of what I've talked about is the plumbing. As a user, you're just going to be looking at this right-hand YAML saying, get me a metric. You shouldn't care where it came from. That's the abstraction that the Captain Metric server provides. Challenge number two. I made a change, and well, great. Now what? Argo Flux has applied the change, but yeah, so what? What, what, what do we do with it? How do I see whether that was good or bad? The lifecycle toolkit gives you full observability of everything that happens on your cluster at the deployment level because it emits um, open telemetry metrics and open telemetry traces. So as Argo does a sync, we build an open telemetry trace of what that looks like. And I'll show you that in a moment. And then, of course, there are graphing solutions like Grafana. You can build dashboards for your Dora metrics because, of course, if we are wrapping, if Captain is, is, is in that deployment process, we know how many deployments you've done. We know how many failed. We know the time it took to do the deployment because we've got the open telemetry trace. And at the bottom there, of course, is the actual open telemetry trace. And I'll, I'll zoom in on that uh, a little bit later. And the third one is this idea of you know, point to point integrations and trying to solve that, that problem. So you've got test tools, you've got security tools, you've got your SLO validations. You know, am I allowed to deploy? Is the infrastructure healthy enough? And all of these are kind of, you have to maintain them. And Captain is trying to solve that with the concept of Captain Tasks. So this is an example of a Captain Task. At the moment, Captain only supports uh, JavaScript, and it runs via the Deno or Dino runtime engine. Uh, as you can see there, you write these tasks. So they can do anything you want. Now, an evaluation looks like that. Obviously, again, a CRD, where you give it an objective, a captain metric, as I described earlier, like available CPUs. You give it an evaluation target, and then basically you link that into your deployment via annotations, and it either passes or it fails. And if it fails, of course, we're not going to do the deployment. So how, how do you get those top two YAMLs into your actual process? Well, it's very simple. It's just a case of labeling up your deployment manifest. So here what you're seeing is uh, annotations that say, pre-deployment, we're going to do these evaluations. So these are things like checking our um, third-party systems are healthy, our dependencies are healthy, our infrastructure is healthy, whatever conditions must exist before you're allowed to deploy that app. Maybe it's a maintenance window. Then we trigger the pre-deployment tasks. And in this case, you know, it's whatever you've written, but let's say we're going to notify someone on Slack that that's going to happen. Then we do this exact same two steps post-deployment. So after the pod is scheduled, you, can, you have the ability to run your own tasks, like notify that the deployment was successful, or um, you know, rollback, or, or, or whatever the case might be. All right, enough slides. Let's see this. So this is the Grafana dashboard that comes sort of out of the box when you install Captain and the observability piece. Um, the lifecycle toolkit comes as a Helm chart, and then of course you need something like Jaeger or Dynatrace to actually visualize those traces. You need a graph, a, a dashboard solution like Grafana. Um, but the actual metrics, the Dora metrics, are emitted by the lifecycle toolkit. So there's, there's nothing to configure there. Now down the bottom, if I zoom in a little bit, we also see a list of traces. 
Now, as you can probably guess, this trace is a deployment. It is an open telemetry trace of a deployment. Now, if I zoom in, what you'll see is there are two sort of just the shape of things. There are two sections here. There's your application, and then we kind of go into the tree, and you've got your workloads. So think about your workloads as your deployment YAMLs, and the application is a concept in Captain, a CRD called a Captain app. And what that CRD does is it allows you to say, this set of deployments is logically to be considered an application. Now, all of those workloads, those checks that I was talking about, happen on both the workload level and the application level. So not only can you test your microservices, whether they're individually healthy, but at the end of all of that, is my application as a whole healthy? Because it's no good saying, well, yes, my cart service is OK. And you know they, they unit tests, really, at the workload level. And then you go to the application level and say, can my user do the thing they need to do? And that's what you're seeing in this tree view. So we go into the pre-deployed tasks. This long one here is actually the deployment. So this is Argo applying the, the, the deployment. And then we do the same thing at the end with the post tasks. So how does this actually work? Well, we start by installing the toolkit. Now, it's important to say it is a toolkit. So you, if you like the sound of the open telemetry traces and metrics, you can have that bit. If you'd like the combination of metric server, you can have just that bit. So you can pick and choose which parts of this you want. But ultimately, you have to annotate your namespace. That is saying, that, that's going to say to Captain, OK, start taking notice of, of this namespace. So this is the application namespace. Then we have a completely standard deployment manifest. Nothing special at all apart from we've put in some, I'm not sure why this is commented out, but it works with app as well. So three labels, app, or name, version, and, and part of. Now the part of is the application level. The name is the workload. So those three annotations are what drive the toolkit. It, th those three are really the only thing you need because that's the information we need to build that picture. What is our workload? Well, that's the name. What application does it belong to? That's the part of. And what is the version of that? That's the version. And that's it. That, that, that's basically it. So you, you run with Flux or Argo or whatever tool you, you currently use and the Lifecycle Toolkit just hooks into that deployment and does the rest for you. How are we doing for time? 302, good. Uh, this is a sample of a captain task definition. So as you can see, this is inline. So you can actually write anything you like. Now, as long as these tasks um, exit with a zero, Captain says, that was successful, fantastic, on we go with our day. If they exit with anything other than zero, obviously that's indicating an error. Now, if your pre-deployment tasks fail, so let, let's say you're trying to do a deployment and you go out and check your third parties. They are unhealthy for whatever reason. And you've done that as a pre-deployment. Your workload will never pass. It will never be deployed it will stay in a pending state. And that is by design. Because what you're saying there is, my third parties have to be healthy. Otherwise, I know my application is going to be unhealthy. Now, post tasks, of course, the deployment, the pod is already scheduled. So if a post task fails, the worst that's going to happen there is you know, you're not going to get your notification in Slack, for example. So what about the captain evaluations? Sorry, I'll show you one other thing, which is, I missed a part. How do we get the pre and post 
evaluations to actually trigger and actually work in the life cycle. Again, they're just annotations. So here we're saying captain.sh pre-deployment evaluation, evaluate my dependencies. Pre-deployment tasks, notify someone via Slack or webhook or whatever the case might be that we're about to start the deployment and then do the same thing afterwards. So this is what a captain evaluation looks like. Again, completely GitOps compatible. Um, we have called it evaluate dependencies. Now remember back here, this is how it ties in. So that's the name of the object. So that's how they tie together. And we have a captain metric reference. As you saw, the metric server evaluate CPUs and we have an evaluation target. And that's, why, that's partly why we've built the Captain Metric server, because we didn't want to pollute this with the idea of providers. We don't want to have, because remember, different teams are probably going to be setting this up in a, in a large enterprise. So one team is going to be looking at the, 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 the metrics and the thresholds. Another team is going to be looking at the, the, the providers. So we didn't want to have you to have to know, well, this metric comes from Prometheus and this one from Dynatrace and so on and so forth. You can treat them, treat that transparently. I guess I really want to open the floor to questions because I know the Lifecycle Toolkit is new to a lot of you. Uh, but actually, that's a good question. How many are new to the toolkit? Uh, how many have only just heard about this now? OK, good. Hopefully, there'll be questions. Um, so in summary, the three big capabilities are a unified way to access observability data. They're the captain metrics. So no matter where you're coming from, what tools your metrics come from, that's the Captain Metrics server. As you saw, all of this is generating Dora metrics and open telemetry traces, sort of quote unquote, out of the box. That's the lifecycle toolkit. That is what's wrapping your deployment. Now, it's important to mention that it is at the cluster level. So Captain is completely agnostic to Flux or Argo or kubectl apply or however you, you, you decide to do that deployment. Captain doesn't really care because it's actually a pod, um, pod scheduler extension that that's when it starts is, where, is, is when the pod is actually beginning to be scheduled. And of course, I talked about the idea of tasks, custom tasks, and the SLO evaluations. And all of this, of course, as you've seen, happens natively in Kubernetes with uh, CRDs. Questions? So the question is, that how does the lifecycle controller find out the time to recovery metric? Because I guess the version would change there. Is it the, the whole application that it looks at, just part of it? And, and so what, what's considered an incident, and when is that remediated? Yeah. Um, that actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad you asked that. That brings up two areas that we uh, need assistance from the community with and advice and opinions on is, is exactly that, time to recovery, but also um, promotions between environments. Because what I've just described there is I'm deploying a set of YAML files. Um, that is an area that is under active discussion. So if that's of interest, please do join you know, the community, get involved, have your opinion, etc., etc. So uh, when the application is initialized for deployment, so metrics are not available for application. 
how do we set the life cycle, let's say, for healthy recovery or healthy deployment? So um, let me show you the definition of a captain application. Now, this step is actually, it's recommended, but it's technically optional. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying I've got a logical application called Simple App. It's in this, sorry, I don't know if that's still working. Uh, it's in this namespace. The application has a version 1.0.2, and it has a set of workloads. And each of those workloads has a different version. Now. It's recommended to do this, obviously, with GitOps, you want to be declarative. But if not, my belief is that the Lifecycle Toolkit will basically look at the annotations on your deployment manifests and build this for you. Um, so that's how you define an application. And then you can also decide your pre and post evaluations and tasks at the application level in this YAML file. Um, your question was more around the health of an application. So the toolkit hooks into the, uh, the scheduler. So the first time the toolkit really cares is when the pod is about to be scheduled. And we basically say, no, no, no wait a minute. We know you're trying to schedule some pods, but let's, let's go and do some tests and tasks and evaluations first. If they pass, go ahead, Kubernetes, and, and, and schedule the pods. That's fine. So th does that answer your question, or not really? No, that, that answers. But um, maybe to be more specific, so application, I mean, the, the pre-deployment checks can check for compute resources or, let's say, memories, availability is there or not. Uh, how about those scenarios where we want to set up, let's say, ingress route? and the controller is down. Does it check the availability of the route? Uh, I mean, can, can we have that capability? Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, have we got time? Yeah, we've got time. OK. Um, so in that scenario, you would mix the two concepts. Remember, you've got your evaluations that pull from the captain metric server. So the first thing is, are, the, are some metrics available in the Captain metric server that we could pull and judge? If they are, perfect. If not, then remember you've got, you kind of fall back to the tasks. And those tasks are just JavaScript. So now the world's your oyster. You can do whatever you like. As long as that task exits with a zero, you're signaling to Captain that it's it's you know, so that's using a task would be how you would reach out to a CDN if the CDN didn't have metrics and say, are you still available before I do my deployment? You do, you know, a, a fetch. You'd make sure their endpoint is up, all good. That's, yeah. Two. The mic's well, closest. I got the mic first. Oh, yes, you did. Um. <laughs> Is there uh, like a distributed way to run Captain at sort of like a management cluster level? Or is there architectural reference for that? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, the only deployment models I've seen at the moment are, you know, cluster, a single cluster because you, you deploy the toolkit per cluster. Um, I'd be very interested in working on a multi cluster setup, a multi region, well, multi cluster, I guess. Uh, set up and and even having that, you know, a Grafana dashboard to visualize that that would be that would be fantastic. I'd I'd love to have that. Yeah. So short answer, no, not yet, but let's let's connect and build that. Yep. Um, would the pre and post deployment um, evaluation also trigger for upgrades if I update uh, the deployment definition with a new image, for example? Uh, yes. Well, yes and no. So it, it works on the version. So you have to bump the versions in your deployment, which you'd probably be doing anyway in reality. So yes, as soon as that version is upgraded, because um, what I haven't shown um, is, is behind the scenes, obviously, as soon as we start this process, we, we set up a load of uh, custom resources on the cluster. So you can say kubectl get captain apps, 
and it'll show you the current version, it'll show you the, the previous versions, and so yes, yes it does. So I have to bump the version of the Captain app, it's not enough to change just the deployment, which, or uh, the deployment spec? Uh, no, just the, just the workload. Any more? Any more for any more? No? Cool. So now I, I got the nod or the shake at the beginning. Now that I've said that, said all of that, do the three pain points, do, does this sound viable or, or, or as a project are we fundamentally missing something here? Are we missing a problem that this solution could solve? Fantastic. Everyone's tired. There's been a lot of talks. I should have got you all to stand up and do some sort of... Okay, which, which, which two? Or which one isn't? The first two. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's, it might be just personal preference, but tasks it just doesn't... I, I don't feel like that's, that's the... Yeah. But I, I haven't tried them yet. <laughs> no, no. I've, um, what, what I think, being here and hearing projects like Ortilius, we could have tasks that push and notify into their repository to say you've got a new version. You know, after a deployment, here's the image and the SHA. Go and, go and stick that into your registry. Um, or even just notifications. I don't... Um, I was talking to the, the Tecton folk today. Maybe we trigger a Tecton task. So, the, the, you know, the, the possibilities are endless, really. And like filing a bug or something. Essentially, when a test fails, you could automate the creation of a, a work item or something like that. Um, I, yeah. I do want to say one, one thing that really caught my uh, mm. attention with Kempton uh, over the last couple of months has been the integration with uh, Trace Test. Uh, yes. And it, seeing that it like, adds a very visual layer and I, I'm <clears throat> I guess my question here is with the lifecycle controller and the metric server do the the trace test tests that run essentially with Kempton do those show up in the same metrics capacity or do, do you see them in sort of the open telemetry uh, like door metrics as well so we built um, how are we doing time oh good um, we, we've built Trace test. Um, I'm in contact with the, the trace test, so they're a fantastic team. Um, and if you haven't seen trace test, definitely check it out. Um, but we built it for version one, Captain version one, which is a completely different thing to this. We haven't yet embarked on that um, journey of, of building it for um, the lifecycle toolkit. But I think it would be a task, and potentially a task that then pushes metrics into the Captain metrics server and then you can do evaluations on it. So yes, I, I, I think um, we haven't solutioned it yet, to, to, to be honest, but I, I think, and it makes sense, right? It makes sense to have all of this in one place. So because your trace tests, you, you know, you're, and, and it's not just trace test, other vendors, Datadog, Dynatrace, will, will want to pull traces from their backends and, and evaluate traces as well. Yeah, the, I, I guess that is like the other problem with, with trace test, which is that it is not multi-cluster or done at sort of like a, a management level. It really has to be run next to the application. So because of that, it's, it's kind of the same thing here, right? Yeah. It's like, unless you're forwarding your telemetry data into an hotel collector or into some other centralized observability plane, you're, yeah. you're not really visualizing or seeing it from like a hub and spoke model. Exactly. Please do, uh, I've just had the one minute sign, so please do sign up to the Slack and, and raise these questions and thoughts. Um, this is exactly why the community is so powerful. So thank you very much, everyone. And um, yeah.